Hi everybody and welcome to He Answers Prayers. I am Vanessa. I just got out the bathtub. So I'm going to moisturize my skin. I am here today. To talk to you guys. And y'all know when I start talking like the conversation can go anywhere <laughs> but I'm here to talk about the topic of suicide and suicide attempts and surviving specifically surviving suicide attempts I haven't been posting on this channel and my Facebook page for some time because I was like I don't have anything to say I don't know what to say sometimes I feel discouraged and lost myself and even though I know people are been it people are helped and benefited from me processing my thoughts when I feel like that that's how the Facebook page he answers prayers started and that's how the channel started with me doing prayer videos and so I haven't been coming and doing anything because I haven't felt like I've had anything of value to give and I've been struggling myself to stay above water and so when I do think about when God does tug at my heart and say you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and I be like but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing and I know what I'm supposed to be doing but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing sometimes and or sometimes I don't feel like what I can do is good enough and so that's sometimes why I don't come on because sometimes I don't think that me just being truthful raw and honest is good enough and so God has really been dealing with me because like I have come across the story of two ladies recently who killed themselves and like when I am not doing anything on this channel or on my Facebook page it's like God is saying Vanessa those could have been people that you could have touched those could have been people who could have heard your story heard your voice and you could have touched you could have changed their minds so like I want to encourage you guys because we all have some sort of a calling or purpose for being here and everything does happen for a reason and sometimes things happen that should have never happened. But God can take those things that should never have happened and turn them into something that can impact another person's life and keep something that shouldn't happen from happening and that's a person taking their lives that should never happen so I was just like what is the purpose what is my purpose what is my purpose God 
And what was the purpose of He Answers Prayers? And what is the purpose of He Answers Prayers? And I remember the day that God gave me the name He Answers Prayers. I remember He was confirming to me that He answers my prayers. And... I think God is showing me in a different light than I've ever seen before the purpose for He Answers Prayers, the direction I should be going with He Answers Prayers, and I never thought of the aspect that I'm thinking of now. I never thought of it that way before. I was just posting prayers because that was something that I needed at that time and people caught on and followed along and I was just going somewhere or doing something that was in me to do and God wanted me to do but sometimes we don't necessarily stop to think of what the bigger purpose and plan of something is. And I think God is showing me that He wants me, my version and my story of how He answers prayers for me. To encourage people that He does answer prayer, this is how He did it for me, and this is how He can do it for you. So today, I want to talk about suicide, suicide attempts, and surviving suicide. I am a survivor of suicide attempts. I have been a person that have thought about suicide pretty much my whole life. Since I think I was like 10 or 12 years old, I thought about suicide and didn't want to be here. I don't think I really knew what suicide was at that age, but I knew I wanted to die. And I knew I didn't want to be here. And my whole life, I felt that way. And then when I think I got in my late 20s, something happened where I made my first suicide attempt and I was discovered I was taken to the hospital my stomach was pumped and I lived and a couple of days after that or maybe the next day I tried again and because of the medicine that they had pumped my stomach with, it was still in my system. So it just made me very sick. And I threw up. And then, fast forwarding years later, I made another suicide attempt. And I never went to the doctor. No one ever found me, no one ever knew, no one ever discovered it. I pretty much kept it to myself and hence this is a product of my last suicide attempt. I never went to the doctor, I never had my stomach pumped, I never received treatment and I'm here today, first of all, to say that because I shouldn't be here. There are not many people that could say, I tried to kill myself three times and are still here. There are not many people that could say, I tried to kill myself one time and are still here. There are some people who are survivors of suicide attempts and being a survivor of attempting to take my life has given me a different perspective on life even though I still suffer from being depressed. 
uh, it has given me an aspect of what in the world were you thinking? <laughs> the ultimate thing that I ask myself when I first, from my first suicide attempt, which was over a man, and I was like, I'm like now that now that hindsight is 2020. I'm like, oh my goodness, he wasn't even worth it. What was I thinking? And I think the biggest thing for me is um, I think being irrational or not being irrational I'm I, I maybe that is the word being irrational or just something hurting me so bad and the first thing that I think in my mind I do it and I didn't think it through or think it out or cry it out I was just like I'm just tired I was just like I'm just tired like is there ever gonna be a day for me where there's not someone hurting me there's not someone breaking my heart I think sometimes just the toll it's not one thing because I'm a very strong person and I have been through a lot. And if one thing was going to take me out, I would have been gone already. But it's just the, just everything compiling. And then when something else happens and you just say, am I ever going to have peace? Am I ever going to have happiness? Am I, am I ever going to have love? And I was just tired. And I'm still tired. I'm still tired of hurting. I'm still tired of crying. But the difference perspective that I have now is nothing and no one is worth you taking your life. I live with this knot in my throat because I try to kill myself behind a man or a situation or frustration or, or disappointment. And at the end of the day, I didn't succeed. I'm still here. I still feel the same way, but now I have an additional burden to bear that I didn't have before. And it's nothing that you can do to ensure. Because when a person tries to take their life, they are doing what they think is going to be enough to take their life. And it was enough for some people. Some people took their life with less. But it wasn't enough for me. And so you you, you never will know if you're going to be the person that is going to survive. And you could possibly be giving yourself more problems than you had before. And that's why I suggest for anybody out there, I don't care who you are, I don't care how old you are, for anyone out there who is thinking and contemplating suicide, I would say do not do it. Don't do it. Even if you could be successful at it, don't do it the things that you're thinking about, the problems that you're having, it's not worth it. Push through, pray through, and live through to another day. 
he wasn't worth it. And it just wasn't a matter of he. For me, I grew up with a lot of traumatic things happening to me as a child. And I have been dealing with those things since I was a little girl. I was sexually assaulted at the age of 10. I was physically and mentally abused my whole life, my whole childhood from family members. I grew up in a violent home with an alcoholic father, a teenage father, a teenage mother, and unstable environment my whole life. And when people think about their childhoods and they think about things that happened to them that were happy moments, like I honestly and truly really do not have a good memory of being a child. Like I really, really, really don't. Like nothing just sticks out and says fun time, happy time. I was beaten, mistreated, cursed at, neglected, sexually assaulted from day one. The environment that I grew up in was not conducive to someone coming out of that environment without being disturbed. And when I talk about those things to you guys and make videos, it helps me. It has been the counseling that I've never gotten as a child. It has been the realization of the truth. Because for years, I was not allowed to speak the truth because no one would hear me. My environment was not an environment of love where you could go to people and speak the truth of what happened to you. They didn't love you in your everyday life. And now if you tell them something about somebody else in the family who harmed you, it's going to make it worse. And then when you finally do come out and tell them, it proves your point. They didn't care. They didn't hug you. They didn't love you. They didn't say, I'm sorry. They didn't go to the police. They didn't go take you to the hospital. They didn't get you help. They didn't do anything. And years of internalizing pain will make a person sick. It will make them have medical conditions and have mental illnesses because, you know, I was thinking, like, when you get a cut or you get a cold, you take medicine. When... A child gets raped and a parent or an adult don't take them to the hospital, don't take them to the police department, don't take them to counseling, you a part of that child has already been murdered during the process of being raped. But when you don't get that child help, 
you are a part of the process of continual murder of that child. And people just say, get over. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. People just say, get over it. Just forget about it. Just let it go. Anybody who tell you they have just gotten over it and they have just let it go, I don't believe them. I, I really, uh, there are people who ha can have, who have received healing. But even in receiving healing, because believe me, I'm much better than I used to be. Even in receiving healing, it doesn't mean it's going to go away. There are features about your physical, who you are and your makeup that you cannot change. And when people don't get, parents don't get children help when things first happen to them, those things become a part of them as a physical attribute that is going to stay with them for the rest of their life. I cannot, my trauma that happened to me as a child is tattooed on my heart and my mind. And no matter how much success I can get in life, no matter how rich I can get in life, that is going to be something that will be with me forever. I can choose to concentrate and focus on other things that will bring me happiness and positiveness, but those things are still always going to be there. So I just wanted to talk about being a survivor of suicide attempts. I feel like it's something that a person should never, ever, ever do. Do not play with fire. Don't let people who do not value you and do not love you break you down and make you feel like your life is worthless because it's not. You have a purpose you have a plan and you do have somebody who loves you even if you can't look around you and find somebody who will love you and I'm giving you an encouraging word today because I am one of those people who I don't have anybody around me who loves me or I currently don't have contact with any of my family. I don't talk to anybody. I don't see anybody. No one checks on me. I am 100% all alone. But you cannot let that destroy you. Even though I personally feel like my family is self-serving and they do not love me and they never have shown me love. They didn't get me the help that I need needed and they don't even care about whether or not I'm living or dead. They didn't do anything to get me help then and even after I made attempts in taking my life, they never came to me to find out why. They never came to me and said, what can we do to help? They never did that. But I cannot let the fact that other people do not love me keep me from living and loving myself. 
and I can't discredit the love that I have from God I can't put what they don't do for me above what God does do for me God loves me God allowed me to survive three suicide attempts He allowed me to survive three suicide attempts. He allowed me to get to a place where even when I'm sad, I don't think about taking my life. He's allowed me to say, well, <laughs> what purpose do you want this to serve? He's allowed me to realize that that I cried out for help for years and no one heard me and no one did anything about it. He's allowed me to realize that there are other people like out there like me. And no one spoke for me. No one was my voice as a child. And God is showing me that there are many children out there who have people who will not speak up for them and will not be their voice. And... I am still alive today to let someone know that even though you are a person who has been a victim without a voice, that you do have a voice. Your life is your voice. Your survival is your voice. You not giving up is your voice and you learning to love you is your voice and you not dying but living is your voice because God loved you for all the people out there who attempted suicide and survived God is telling you that he loves you and to all those people out there who will watch this video and videos like this who think about suicide and never have tried and was thinking about it at the moment when they watch this video and change their minds that is God speaking to you and letting you know that you are loved and at some point you have to say to yourself why just like you ask yourself when you love people and you and they don't love you back the way you love them and you ask yourself why is my love not good enough that's what you need to ask yourself about the love of God you are looking for love in all the wrong places from all the wrong people who clearly don't get it but there is somebody who loves you and that is God why isn't his love good enough for you and I had to ask myself that why is his love good enough because he clearly loves me he do so much to let me know that he loves me why isn't his love good enough and then I had to realize that that's all I need. And when I realized that the love of God is enough and that's all I need to get by, nothing else matters. <laughs> I can freely live. I realized 
that God's love was enough and why was I worried about those people that are, were around me who didn't even care about a baby girl being raped and they, they kept it a secret and they didn't get her help and when they seen that she was tore up inside for some reason they still didn't try to get her help and when she tried to take her life they still didn't care <laughs> thank you Jesus why are you beating yourself up about trying to get them people to love you who never loved you Let the love of God be enough. Because he's the one that's carrying you through. He's the reason why you're still here. Let his love be enough. And let his love encourage you and teach you how to love yourself and respect yourself. Respect yourself by not trying to take your life. Respect the life that God did give you by cherishing it and finding the purpose and his plan for your hurts and your pains and how he can turn that around and how he can help many other people and save many other people through you pushing through and surviving. And I am a survivor of a suicide attempt, of several suicide attempts. Uh, my last suicide attempt was in 2007. And I am a survivor of a suicide attempt and I live daily with a result of that suicide attempt that is my message to however many people would hear me say don't do it don't try it it's not worth it he's not worth it she's not worth it they're not worth it and even the pain is not worth it don't let what people did to you destroy you to the point where you want to destroy yourself then you're doing the same thing that they did you they didn't think you were worth anything they didn't think you were valuable and you're you're doing the same thing that they did you're saying I'm nothing I'm nobody and I'm worthless and I don't have a purpose and I don't have a plan that's not the truth that is so far from the truth every person and every individual has a purpose and a plan and value and you can make an impact in a positive way in some shape form or fashion don't be like everybody else going around destroying things that don't even belong to you they tried to destroy you they destroyed you by trying to take something from you and you or trying to destroy you by taking something that you don't even own. You don't own your life. Your life doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. And you need to honor that. You need to honor the fact that you don't belong to you. You belong to God. That is my message for today. This is Vanessa with He Answers Prayers. He does answer my prayers and I know He will answer yours. If you have any questions, 
leave them down in the comment bar below. I am going to put a link in the, in the comment bar below for suicide preventions. Uh, if you are having thoughts of suicide, contemplating suicide, I'm telling you right now, do not do it. Please listen to me and please know that you are not worthless. You are priceless. Know that. If you can't do it alone, get help. Pray and cry out to God. And if you can't do it alone, contact the, the suicide prevention numbers down in the description bar and get you some help and just cry out to God and know that you are loved. And the most important thing is to learn to love yourself. Nobody taught you that you were a value. Nobody taught you that you were priceless. But I'm telling you that today. Take it and run with it. And now begin to live a life of knowing that it's true. And start living a different life than you are accustomed to. Start, I, I, I say all the time that I had to learn that no one can make me happy. That I am responsible for putting a smile on my face every single day. I'm responsible for pursuing things that will make me spot, that will make me smile and make me happy. No other individual on the face of this earth is responsible for my happiness. If I base my happiness on people, I will always be disappointed. So learn to live life, not making someone else responsible for your happiness. It's not the end of the world because you lost a lover, you lost a friend, or your family members mistreat you or abuse you or hurt you. It is not the end of the world. You can continue to live. And you don't have to stop living. And you don't have to stop breathing. Just because of what other people think. If somebody is the type of person that would tear you down and destroy you and tell you negative things, then that person is the person that do not need to be in your life. So if for some reason or another by chance that person exits your life, that is the best thing that could have ever happened to you. And don't get in a pattern of surrounding yourself by, by those same type of people. Stop attracting those type of people who are going to take something from you every single time. That's what's going to make you feel like you're worthless because you're allowing yourself to be taken advantage of by people who don't even deserve to be in your presence. And that's just the, the truth of the matter. No matter how you look, no matter how pretty you are, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how ugly you are or how, how much you weigh or whatever it is, we all have different challenges no matter what it is. Don't let people tear you down. I can let people tell me, oh, you're bald-headed, oh, you're ugly, oh, look at that knot in your throat. Who cares? You're not perfect. And you have something wrong with you. Don't point out my imperfections when you have ten times more worse things that are wrong with you. I love myself and I had to learn to love me for me and who I am and accept me for me. And people could stare at me or look at me. It doesn't bother me and I don't care. So find your true beauty. Find your purpose. And learn to love yourself. And when you learn to love yourself, what other people think about you don't matter. And that's the truth. <laughs> okay, y'all. I'm about to go and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye now.